Welcome back as we kickstart ourselves into game number two to get to see exactly how the response is from Fury. It was a bit of a one-sided affair uh, in terms of Iron really running the show from start to finish. Yes, there were a few blips on the radar during the early laning phase, but from that point onwards, it was just a very well-rounded team effort, right? As much as we meme on the impact of top lane, Dorymon was an absolute menace. Uh, nobody could get past him. He was a brick wall. But if you could, then you were just met with so much damage that it didn't matter anyway. Sides to flip. Iron now on the blue side. Let's see what their focus is. Yeah, and I would really like to see if you, you know, leave the Ezreal up because it's it's something that you can attack in early game. He's not necessarily a really strong laner. Leona is, once again, like a very strong laner. That's probably one of the reasons why we see Ezreal doing so strong because of the pairing in the 2v2. But I want to see Hooper pull out. You know, he's very trusted Zeri. I think it's a good matchup. It's going to be very good into the amount of CC and Dive coming out of Ion, and this will give them a lot more ability to play the early game. But we see the Ezreal being removed, so they, they don't even want to bother with that. I certainly don't. I want to even consider it. And I, I did wonder if we were going to get that knee-jerk reaction. I'm, the more I think about it and the more I am aligned with your, your idea of like, you know, maybe you've got a counter to it, but perhaps their thinking is if we just remove it, we don't even have to worry in the very first place. Perhaps we've got a completely different draft for red side to uh, showcase. So first pick will be then the Ash this time played on Ion side. I do wonder with the center hover, if they just, uh, you know, revert back to um, like a center on and just say, you know, let's go for something incredibly stable. We can shift our emphasis elsewhere. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So, I mean, like picking picking a frontliner, something that can absorb all this, uh, you know, the poke coming out of the ash and the just to tank the arrow up. Also really good, you know, having that global threat. I think it's something to really, that's underrated about center. I think this pick is very good. And I don't really know why it dropped off in uh, priority in Oath because I think that this pairing is really strong and it's very, very good into these immobile champs like Ash. Well, he is, and is that going to deter them from going for the Leona? Oh, I wouldn't put it past Hex Flash just to lock that one in again and say, well, it worked with the Ezreal. I'll make it work with the Ash, and I'll just ignore the Orn. Quite simply, your center's going to be farming for souls, going to be there for harass, but isn't going to be actively farming to get items compared to the Orn. So they are going to run it back in that regard. Now the question becomes, what are we locking here? Do we want to guarantee our mid laner? Do we need to, you know, showcase what our jungle could be? Um, yeah, what, what do they want to try and show that Fury could look to try and break apart? Well, I mean, you have multiple options here. You could take, uh, you usually take away like one of the OPs. Tristana's gone, Corky's left up. If they want to take that for the mid lane, you can. You have the option to pick your your jungler or Talia, which is a flex because you've already showed your support, which is that set up for the Talia. So if this does go into the jungle role, he's still really happy regardless of what matchup he's going to verse. It's also a champ who's very good into, you know, tanks like Orn. So whether this goes into the support, um, in the jungle or mid lane, Talia's going to be comfortable this game. He's going to be very comfortable. Uh, has only been played once by Jovi. Kohli yet to showcase uh, any AP junglers just yet, unless you consider Maokai to be uh, of the AP nature. But uh, Renekton comes out in back-to-back -back games. You'd imagine that wouldn't be a flex of any regard. He's going to be going back to Maple Syrup to give him that uh, ease of access. But they will give him a little bit of extra cover and say, you know what, Dorimon, you're not allowed to play Cassante. Yeah, they're getting rid of the Cassante. They saw how proficient Dorimon was on that last game. Actually, another band will go onto the top lane to you know, blanket protect this Renekton in any matchups that might give Dorimon a bit of an edge to be able to create a lead and really take over the game like he did in game one. Whether or not that means we're banning away things like the Rumble, perhaps even the Kennen that he gave us that one little teaser on to really be a bully from afar. But it is going to be the Victor ban. We certainly know that uh, Chirp is a bit of a fan of the old Victor. That has a very wide range of those mages to utilize. Vi2 now as well, coming into second rotation. So if they are building a comp where it's all revolving around one person, then the Vi is a little bit telling of that. Yeah, when I see this, this Victor ban, I think this Talia is going towards the mid lane. It's one of the harder matchups for Talia. You're out, you're out, out range so hard. It's very hard to you know initiate trades as a Talia when you know, there's constant laser poke coming out. And in the side lane, Victor is one of the better side laning mages, so it's very easy to you know, get the evolves, get the slow on the ulti, and just get, find their solo kills. Let's see then, what is the next focus with uh, the brand there to complement the Victor ban? A whole bunch of different uh, AP options taken off the table. Where do you get yourself that center on? And you certainly need a, uh, a major pick to bolster up. And the Syndra comes out, not a champion we've seen from Chirp this split, uh, but certainly one in the past. Yeah, th this is nice to see as well, Skimmy, because, you know, Chirp, in the past, known for you know playing these aggressive mages like the Syndra, and it, uh, this is what I want to see. I want to see more ability to play the early game because if they want to keep going for these, uh, you know, all right, let's fight this objective, let's fight this next objective. Even though we don't have flashes, we don't have ults, 
play these champs like Syndra, who can do so much damage in the early game. It does feel like they give themselves an easier ask of uh, being able to try and contest that of the uh, aggression that Ayana bringing to the table. But they're going to lock in the in yet again. Coley obviously looks so, so impressive on an in-game one. So uh, no reason to change things up too drastically. But the consideration does become, what does Dorimon want to pick? Knowing that he is going to go into this Renekton. Takes all the time in the world. Does settle on the Gragas in the end. And now you say, what is the missing part that Fury does need? Yeah, well, they wanted to hold their jungle for 5P, get Nox a matchup that, you know, they are worried. They were worried about the flex. They cared more about their jungle matchup than the mid lane matchup. I think that is quite curious, honestly, because I think that if they got the, you know, better mid matchup, regardless, it would have been better for Fury. But, you know, Nox finally finding the angle to play one of his AP junglers. And I think that besides his Bell Death, this is probably one of the champions that he's very known for. Well, it is exciting, right? Uh, a little bit refreshing at the same time to see something a little bit different come out from the uh, the Fury camp and to showcase yet another person looking to pick up the, uh, the Lilia, which is certainly a case of being so proficient in a meta like this, where we are grouped up so much, where everybody is looking to try and fight to the death, where we're uh, two for now for every single objective. All that takes is a, a cheeky little Lilia to, to get amongst it, swing around the mace, and suddenly everybody's been put to sleep. Yeah, and... When I look at Ion and I look at Fury's comp, if Ion gets five Merc Treads or four Merc Treads, it's so hard for Fury to play the game. There's so much CC that is avoidable by tenacity this game. And, you know, I don't think there's an insane amount of AD damage coming out. You know, we look at the center, we look at the Renekton. I don't think this Renekton is going to really be able to, uh, you know, shred through the front line. And if Fury fall behind in the early game, Hooper is going to be their only, like, major AD threat as the game scales up. And... We'll have to see what build Doramon wants to go for. It's going to be the, the normal, you know, like, Rod of Ages into the, the semi-Gragas Bruiser tank build that we do see. But, I will say, Skimmy, I like a bit more of the uh, aggression coming out of the Fury team. They have the ability to play a lot more uh, without these cooldowns that they were lacking in last game, where they keep going for these skirmishes without their major cooldowns. I like the mid matchup much more for Fury. I think that, you know, having the Syndra instant leader has always been a good Syndra matchup. It's not one where you have to worry about Syndra's bad early game now, and you get to scale up, find the Q of all as fast as possible, and start bullying that lane. Well, that seems to be the sort of the name of the game in this one, right? You want the Syndra and Senna to try and hit breakpoints as quickly as they can, so they can be a scaling menace at the same time, obviously being relevant enough during those early to mid game stages that Iron had to think, uh, you know, guess again as to should we actually go for this play? or will we get punished for it? Well, either way though, it is a best of two. Iron are currently leading with a uh, one game lead, and they'll be quite happy thinking, well, we've run it back in a very similar fashion. Perhaps we can just close it out with a perfect uh, 2 0 get all the three points, and look forward to uh, another game later on. But that's a few, I think, their comp does give them a little bit of an easier time of trying to find those fights. Obviously, you've got the scatter of the week, which can find that range stun. You've got then the, uh, you know, the classic Nautilus Orn champion, right? Ultimate, guaranteed, knock up, easy as uh, easy as you like it. So I am curious to see how this does uh, materialize, come into this uh, laning phase, if we can find any kind of lane to lean towards. I suppose where Nox wants to try and play towards primarily. Yeah, I, I assume Nox is just going to continue to clear. He doesn't want to run into Collie in the early game. Lee Sin is such a you know powerhouse in the 1v1, especially against these squishy mages. Nox can find leads through his jungle clear speed. Coley wants to, you know, link up with the Hex Flash, link up with Joby, move around the map, find these kills. Because if he snowballs, if he finds, like, extra kills in early game, it's so hard for these squishy champs of Chirp, Hooper, and Nox to be able to play the game against a Fedley Sin. Here we go, then. We start from the very get-go, and it is to be Hex Flash that looks to uh, get him find his face, make sure that no uh, crazy action takes place again with people losing way too much uh, HP. See Coley crossing across the map, looking to see what he can find inside the jungle. Already hunting for the Lilia, much to your point, right? If they're not here, fantastic, I get to steal away a camp. If they are here, maybe I get a camp and you too. Yeah, this is one of the major ways to attack these uh, main junglers. Give me is they always want to play for the full clear. They always want to be efficient. You invade their, you invade on your second or your third camp. You can always find them. If it's your third camp, you find them in the jungle and you play for that 1v1. But if it's on your second camp, you can steal away a camp. So we'll have to see if Nox is able to recognize he's been invaded and whether he's going to invade his top side and try to trade these camps. It does feel rough, though, to try and, uh, you know, have the courage to go for an invade, knowing that your top and mid lanes are just getting pushed in, so you wouldn't get any kind of reinforcement anytime soon. He's going to come across to the wolves and say, well, I can get this one pretty happily. What's a ward that on blue and goes, well, that's gone. And now we see that Grump's been taken, too. Has to be even more concerned. This might be Hooper blowing cleanse here. 
to go wrap around. Sonic Wave just out of range as Hex Flash tries to find it. Sticks flashing in his face. But Hooper with a flash dash and disengage root. Making sure that Ion do not get a bit of a repeat and find themselves in very early first blood. Jovi nearly getting a repeat with the gank onto Chirp in the Oi. 1v1. And is this going to simply die to red buff auto attacks as Nox gets it done for first blood? Yeah, that is so unfortunate. But for the Fury bot lane, Skimmy, Collier is going to rotate up instead of, you know, staying around to try pressure. Doesn't find the trade kill, Skimmy. And he might fall down here. I think he's, yeah, he's really gone for this one. And unfortunately, he's just literally donated them a freebie. Um, that feels bad. That does feel very, very bad. But sometimes the allure of a low HP member is too much to pass by. Yeah, and we do see the aggression coming out of Final on the Sticks. Doesn't have the Flash himself as he did blow it earlier. So if this Q does land on just the Flash, wow. order, that's easy, Skimmy. Unbelievable. Literally all across the map right now, we're seeing Fury really rise up to the task. And so we need to be so much more aggressive early. And now, three kills as easy as you like. Yeah, and I think this might have been a mistake out of the Ion side. You know, Sticks flashing forward, blowing the Flash out of Hooper himself was very good for a team play. But for his individual 2v2, it wasn't good. Coley decides not to stick around and punish that when he sees that Nox has, you know, crossed mid to the top side and, you know, really punish Hooper, who was going to die under that turret if they play for the dive. He tries to go up to the top side, unable to find the trade kills, Joby unable to find the solo kills while well, such min like minimal margin is happening across the map, Skimmy. And Fury are finding leads thanks to it. Well, certainly not going to slow down Joby's attempt to be aggressive. One more auto, one more pebble, either or will have to do. And Joby's going to sidestep out on that swirling C, but going to get ganked upon by two different members. Coley going to try and do as much as he can to switch their aggression. And in the end, it proves to be successful because they split the decision. Do we go for the Lee Sin or do we finish up to Talia? In the end, they get nothing. Yeah, and Joby is doing such a good job in the 1v1. You know, he missed out on that solo kill earlier by like 10 health, but finds the solo kill here himself. So very nice to see he's doing so good in the 1v1. That's what I talked about. Like Syndra's early game just isn't the same as it used to be. A lot of it is about scaling, you know, getting the 40 stacks, getting access to those uh, double Qs is the main point of Syndra where like you come online because it's so hard to abuse Syndra and her like long cooldowns that she has in the early game when she finally gets an evolution. Yeah, as you mentioned, right, it's the ability to pick up all those uh, splinters and once you have upgraded one, then suddenly things become just a little bit easier for you to pilot, not only in the laning phase, but also when you want to try and take that 1v1 and, and showcase who the bigger uh, the bigger mid player is, but promising signs to come into this uh, second game if they're Fury are looking to try and salvage at least a point to try and double their current standings oh, by uh, just over 1,000 gold. Perfect start, and especially if it allows Nox to go back to farming. Yeah, and we do see Chirps, you know, still playing outside the creep wave, still playing aggressively, still trying to trade as much as possible, but I don't think he wants to be, like, trading health like this because he has Lilia in the jungle. Lilia doesn't want to be impacted in mid lane. She just wants to be in her jungle, clearing over and over again. Lee Sin wants these volatile lanes to keep happening because if he can impact the map in early game, Skimmy and Snowball, he'll be able to take over the game. That's what we'll be hoping for, but both supports certainly have their work cut out for him for leaving bot lane and rotating to mid as often as they can. You certainly know that either side would look to entertain the idea of a gank to try and uh, accelerate their lead as Chirp falls upon that Unraveled Earth and is forced to walk away with a lot less HP than he initially started with. But this time Maple Syrup actually getting a little bit of a foothold in top lane, which is nice to see. Certainly was a, uh, a very rough start for him making his debut in the LCO last game, but this time able to handle the Gragas, it would seem. Yeah, this matchup's always been, it's, uh, you know, Renekton's able to push while trading in the early game. Gragas can't really muscle him out yet, but once he gets access to the, uh, a bit armor, or if he decides to go for the, the health in the uh, Rod of Ages, if he wants to go for, like, the double scaling mage items, he's going to be able to have a lot more sustain than Renekton, thanks to the passive, and just really, you know, win these trades, and eventually get to a point where he can, you know, start using that body slam as a wave clear tool while trading. That's opted for the uh, the Grass Varun as opposed to the Phase Rush that we saw earlier. So he's going to be a very tanky boy no matter what build he decides to go for in the end. And we have seen Dorymon be a, uh, a bit of a titan if it were to be that of an AP Gragas. Could definitely add another level of uh, scary threat to their table. As Chirp once again going to get flipped on back inside the turret range. Sidestep on that Scatter of the Week and Jovi. Gonna be a okay for the meantime as we check in with top and maple syrup has already burnt the dominance explosive cast careful. was burnt prior you'd have to imagine so baiting him to a ward flashing out of that sonic wave because if that had connected lights out for maple and he still might be in trouble because dorimon is going to look to try and crash this wave as quickly as they can it is a cannon wave so it's going to take a long time target has been acquired and now they're looking to try and execute 
He's in a little trouble, Skimmy, definitely. But he does find the heal up on the wave. But I think, you know, Coley's gonna be able to wait for that Sonic wave to come back up. Easy execute. This is one of the problems with, like, you know, maps. You gotta, like, you gotta recognize you're in trouble. You can't be trading aggressively, chasing people out. Because your jungler is not there to help you. So do see the arrow come out from base. And if that landed, I think that would have been a kill, Skimmy. I agree. Yeah, very close. And uh, good, good awareness from Chirp there. He didn't even have Flash available. So he couldn't even mash that button if he tried. Sidesteps it and is able to then wrestle a lead, especially in the HP department, to full Shirby back. Yeah, we see the 40 splinters come out of Chirp, so he's got access to the two Qs. You can see like the the on the the champion stat, you can see like he's got the extra one, always stacking, always having one in the back pocket. The health advantage will start going towards him. He's gonna do a lot better in the 1v1. Had to buy the uh, you know Lucidity Boots early on because he lost access to his flash, so he needs an extra bit of move speed to be able to navigate like a lot of pressure coming to lane, but he's gonna base now. Pick up some AP, probably the lost chapter and some components, and just you know have a much better time in this 1v1. Yeah, he's just gonna help him not only with his wave clear, but his harass and also that all in potential, right? Then another all to add into the mix for unleashing that pain on any given target. And suddenly it is uh very much lights out for them. Nox on vision having cleared top side is just gonna utilize all that bonus movement speed just to rush into top. Say hello to Dorimon, who will just simply sidestep that swirling seas and say, uh, it was a nice attempt, but you won't catch me. Out goes the Solar Flare, instant cleanse from Hoofer. Fino, not with the same luxury, but it is enough to try and force them underneath this turret. It's a very fragile wave, which Fino tries to trim. Summons the Call of the Forge God, out comes the damage, but it's not enough. Hooper needed more protection than that, needed even more mitigation, but they will find a trade back. Hexflash tanking the turret, dies for his sins. Yeah, so this is one of the problems with Nox showing top. He has almost no kill pressure on the Dorymon, he still has the Flash. Walks past the ward, shows and shows on vision, which means Ion feels so comfortable to dive this bot lane. Wow, look at that. I mean, just so much conviction behind that play. We're both low HP, but I see a target. We're both going in and we're making it work. We pan back to mid lane right now, much like you said, Chirp with an item advantage, with a uh, shard advantage. He's just able to do so much damage that he unleashes the power onto Jovi and is literally auto attacking him to death. Even if he flashes away, it wasn't to be. Coley comes into play clean up, but Hex Flash takes it for himself. Yeah, Chirp decided to hold the flash there, but Nox finds the trade kill onto Sticks, and this is so important. He's missing a cannon wave. Hooper's getting damage onto this pirate, probably pick up a plate for himself. And if Nox does pick up the camp here, I would say this might be a favorable trade for Fury. Let's see if it continues in their favor. They still have that 500 gold lead. It hasn't uh, really changed ever since they found those initial few kills at the very beginning of this game. Gonna get denied all these minis, but Hooper's not really interested in that. He just wants these soul stacks, and he's gonna manage to pick up a few of these. Once Nox jumps in, steals away the red buff, then puts uh, you to sleep and says goodbye, Collie. Finally, I get my revenge. Yeah, and we see Nox isn't really interacting with anyone on his team. You know, he's like he's showing on the map when he probably shouldn't, but he's running around the map. He's clearing all his camps. He's getting kills onto the jungler. He's cleaning up these lanes, which you know. Keep, uh, there's so much volatility happening in the map, and he's just cleaning up, and he's already picked up his Leandries, and he's very comfortable this game, Skinny. Like, if he does decide to pick up a defensive item next, he can, you know, tank up a lot of the damage coming out of the Ion side and be a really strong bruiserish mage in these, in these uh, skirmishes. Yeah, I'm pretty scary about the prospect of him picking up a very early Zonias. Uh, the ability to be so aggressive and to continue to snowball would be uh, uh, second to none at this point, right? 3-0-1, the only person on this team that has uh, yet to die so far. Only bounty in the game to add to that as well. And even it is uh, a bit of a selfish place of not wanting to link up with your team, it's working. And if it continues to work, then who are we to say otherwise? They want to continue the goal lead to be in their favor. And it has actually forced a, uh, a lane flip from the bot lane of Ion. Skimmy, there is a TP on Chirp and a TP on Fino. So we have to see if they want to help out Maple Syrup on this tower dive here. Will they decide to help him or will he simply get surrounded by four? Not even four. It's too quick for the kill to be found that Jovi's not even able to get into signed by the idea of a cheeky little assist of his own. Dorimon, I mean, he's taken up the tower. Look at that body slam. Surely he finds what he does. He's rewarded for what was such a heroic attempt to hold on the map flip. And unfortunately for Ion, they're unable to be in a position to execute any other members. But they won't mind too much because they're going to get this top tower or at least get it very low. Yeah, a much better job from the Ion top laner on the uh, you know the map split, trying to outplay this 3v1 dive. So he's able to find the one for one. But the kill does go to Nox. And I think that you know these farming junglers in these in these split map scenarios are going to... It's always going to favor them, Skippy. It's always about finding as much gold as possible onto the right people. And we see that, you know, Nox walks in. 
Dorymon is extremely tanky at this point in the game, and he's able to absorb so much damage, you know, thanks to the uh, the passive, the Drunken Rain passive with the sustain that comes out of him. And, you know, Senna not really doing any damage at this point in the game, so really well played by Dorymon to be able to find the trade kill there and, you know, not make it such a dire scenario. Absolutely. Yeah, you certainly know you're up against it when uh, you're getting died by that many members, but to at least take one with you is always going to be a win. You can see <laughs> two members locked inside <laughs> there. Uh, the Baron Pip thinking, how do we get ourselves out of this rough situation? They can't just simply turn away and say, we're no longer interested in this one. As Hexflash looks to lock down Chirp, Coley going to get pushed to the side by the scatter of the week, and Jovi no longer able to join this fight, blocked away. And if you use that Weaver's Wall, he's going to turn around in the end. There's Noxus swings that staff around, finds one, hunting for a second, but knocked back there by Coley's kick, and denied a double. He is very fed skimmy. The amount of damage he's outputting right now, even through all the resistances coming out of the Leona W. I'm very afraid for Ion based on how fed Nox is right now. He really can take over this game right now. It's not to say that the rest of his team is weak, but he is incredibly strong. He does have the world at his feet as to what does he decide to do next. And would not be too surprised to see the rest of Fury just look to rally around the jungler, which is uh, a very rare sight to see. Yeah, and to be fair, skimmy. Ion's comp has a lot of CC, so if something lands, it will stick, as we do see the trade coming out of Jovi. Ooh, very as we say, close. Flash very, very close there. <laughs> Just cops the Ash ult, survives through it, and then Flash thereafter. And you did think for a second, maybe, just maybe, you'd fall on down and they'd find at least something on that occasion for Ion. But no, Fury, quite content in their ways. Uh, 1k lead now becomes 2k, and... It does bring into question what we discussed on the analyst test beforehand, right? You know, the team that wins early tends to win out the game as a whole. And I'm wondering if we're sort of heading on along that uh, trajectory this game too. Yeah, we'll have to see how this game goes. The, the problem though for Fury is a lot of their gold is on Nox. So if any CC does land, he does have access to the Merc Treads though. So he can, you know, maybe throw out a flash when it does come back up to live any follow up. But since he doesn't have it right now, if an Ash Arrow lands into a Solar Flare, into a Talia shove, he is going to fall down regardless of how fit he is. Let's see if he finds the liberty of getting to the items he needs before that really becomes a bit of a concern. TP denied, the turret falls on down, so cancel. unable to assist on this occasion. But it's not going to stop them from still rocking up to try and make this fight a winning one for them. Ah, so close by Hexflash. The Solar Flare doesn't get the stun, he gets to slow the Flash. Zenith Blade just out of range, and if they found that kill there, that may have been the turning point. Yeah, definitely, and you know, Hexflash recognizes if any CC lands, he will be falling down. We do see Hooper, you know, going for the, the, the bubble item, the bubbly Thali item straight away to try, you know, be able to play around Leona throwing solar flares, Ash ult's coming out. Team, very aggressive right now, dodging everything, <laughs> fancy feet. There's no way Hooper just literally dodged everything there. What a mad lad. In comes Doraemon. He's had enough, says something has to die. And he will be rewarded in the end, sending Chirp to the grave for 30 seconds. Out comes the Ash ult, Collie on the flank looking for Hooper. You've dodged everything, but you can't dodge this. Kick to the head, out goes the call of a Forge God, only going one direction. And his fine is unable to answer back with a second charge of that one. But Maple's going to be left to his own farming top side, and this mid lane's about to fall. Yeah, and the problem with Fury's comp right now is a lot of their golds on Nox. No one else is very strong. We see Fino flashing for trying to be aggressive, but he just misses. He whips and he falls down so easily, Stimmy. He certainly does, and like this does feel that turning point in the game. They've had enough of uh, really giving Fury that chance to feel inspired, and that 2k lead is no longer there. But it's all so well done by Hooper at the start here. Yeah, just a lot of fancy feet coming out, but Church is out of position, doesn't have access to the flash from what these previous skirmishes were. Really nice flank from Dorymon. We don't have TP on Maple, so he's unable to impact this fight, and we see that they try to defend his tower at 3v5. CC lands onto Nox, and you see how easy it is to take him down, even though he's so strong. So strong, but falls on down, and it couldn't have gone to a better person, right? It's Sticks that picks up the shutdown goal, so gonna be very, very happy as he'll be able to rush towards that Trinity Force in little to no time. Already has the phage, so already uh, a third of the way there. And back to laning phase we go as we see at the 17 minute mark, it's actually iron for the first time in this game. They've actually got the gold lead back in their favor. Once the TP does go towards the bot side of this Fury as a two man unit looking to try and take this Herald and make sure they have at least something to keep the gold going back their way. Yeah, we see the TP coming out of Jovi though, so what's the flank onto Hooper? Let's see who's the focus right now. Sticks goes to one target, that is Nox. He's stuck in the air, but flash across the wall, doesn't lose any uptime whatsoever. So back-to-back -back kills for Sticks onto the enemy Bambi. Happy days for him. They'll find a second in the mid lane as Fido falls on down too. 
Hooper amongst the action as well. And this mid game, I mean, I tell you what, there's something in the water here. I, it, it comes to the mid game, they always find a way to stabilize. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we see the items coming through as completions for the Fury side. I'm a bit concerned about the damage profile looking at Fury's comp. We see the Edging Knight coming out for Hooper. Really good defensive item for him to allow him to, you know, play aggressive and really avoid the, the Ash Arrow and the Solar Flare coming out of Hex Flash. But it's just not going to offer the same damage that he would get from the other Lethality items. And I'm a bit concerned as he is, like, the two main AD threats coming from Fury are falling behind. But, like, yeah, going into the replays to me, how easy it is to pick Hooper, even though he has he had access to the edge of night, it's not here to save him from Joby flanking him like this. Yeah, it's brutal. Then you can really see the rest of Fury completely split, fighting from multiple different directions, not grouped up as a unit. As you can see, Ion just turned their attention. Who's the next one? As a four-man squad, we did rotate towards that one. So he's a bit of an awkward state now, and maybe really starts to expose some of the concerns that you mentioned about having all that gold in sole position by Lilia. Yeah, but okay, to be fair. It's only a 2k gold lead, and Noxus Flash has come back up, so this next fight is the fight that he can take over. This is probably their main window to get back into the game. This uh, next objective coming up with the Dragon, you know, Fury don't like to kill objectives, they like to fight everything, so they're going to come and group on the mid wave and, you know, fight for some control. Styx doesn't have access to the Flash here, so this might be lights out for him. Let's see if they can find it then. Two members knocked off by their own ultimate instant kick by Cole leader there, and uh, really nicely peels away Styx, but then Hex Flash becomes the focus instead. He Expended his full combo, and that was all she wrote. It's going to be a bit of a sad charge from Shelly here as it finalizes the damage onto that tier one turret. It didn't need the Herald, but they'll settle for it. Question does become though, does that give them access to go for their third trade? Can they look to stack up a very early soul point or will Iron answer back as they go in? You can see Doraemon looking to continue to threaten. The Dragon still has been engaged. Styx is attending to mid wave, and Coley also hunting from across the wall. And you know, I think contesting this could be scary, Skimmy, if they do want it, but I think Coley's just going to try play for the steal, get out. I saw it go to like 70 HP. Very, very close. But he can ward hop to safety. Gets put to sleep, but he's so far to range now, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so they got the, dra they got the dragon, they got the mid turret, Skimmy. They're happy with getting away with murder, pretty much, even though they aren't in a state where they should be able to win these fights. Just because of the summons of Skimmy, they're able to do so. So very nice to see that Fury pulled the trigger, Fino pulls the trigger on the Call of the Foolish God. Sticks instantly taken out of the fight, pretty much put down a low HP. Coley forced to blow his flash. Once again, we see Chirp being aggressive in the side lane and getting caught out again. Unfortunately for him, as you say, yet delayed on the re-entry there by Coley, but gets the execution in the end, and now matches the power, or at least the KDA, you should say, then, of, uh, of Nox, who, uh, at that point, leading into that uh, Dragon fight, was the only person with two items, so it was a fantastic moment for them to try and showcase just how strong they were. They didn't even need to really rely upon it, so... This game really is going back and forth and back and forth, and a 2k lead now favors Iron, but I'm still not sure which team to favor. Yeah, I would definitely put uh, more eggs in the Iron basket right now. With those summoners coming back up from the Iron side, it's very hard for Nox to find these uh, these huge sleeps that he really needs to find in these team fights to have any impact. And as more items come forward, as we get the cleanse back up for Sticks, maybe a Zonya is coming out of Zerobi. A lot of defensive items or defensive summoners to be able to navigate this sleep that could potentially land on the multiple members. But that seems like uh, what we're leaning towards is the next uh, acquisition by a lot of these players, right? It's the ability to try and outplay some of these really decisive cooldowns. Uh, obviously, unleashing the power can be a pretty devastating one. Same could be said then, as you say, for the slate. Even the kick, right, of the, of the Lee Sin or even the Ash Arrow. I mean, there's certainly so much to uh, warrant that you need to be careful because an Ash Arrow into a seismic shove and it really is as easy as that for Iron to then pounce upon you for that kill. Yeah, just unfortunate, unable to get the auto on the blast going to be able to get to safety. But we see the Ash ult going down, we see the Clear Wall going down. These are two tools that are not threatening Nox anymore. So if they do find a fight here, Nox might be able to do a lot. The decision there from Fury as to, well, are they on the Baron? There's surely no way, right? They must be ganking. Must they go for the face check? They find what they're after, but maybe not the answer they wanted in the end because top lane's been pushed out. Now they regroup as a squad and look to try and force up the fight. Nox is the focus right now, and for good reason too, but Hexflash gets chirped. And they jump to try and find Nox, who instantly flashes away, dra drawing their attention even further out of this one. This becomes messier and messier. Great explosive cast by Doraemon, hunting out Hooper, who lurks in the shadows to try and dodge their ability to find him. And will be successful in the end. Baron is there, but is that HP healthy enough to start this? I don't think so. Warmogs, gimme. Warmogs. I think they're very comfortable to start this Baron. We see a really nice kick coming out of Coley, you know, disengaging. We see his build as well. He's just a complete Lilia counter right now. He's gone for the Morgoth, for the Merc Treads. 
even though they are missing health on some members, I think Ion are pretty safe with, uh, you know, pulling this Baron right now. Well, Maple seems to be geared up and ready for the contest, for that burger flip. He's already popped that Dominus, he's ready to jump into this one, but it's no contest from Nox, he's just simply not here. The fight will break out, but it is going to be very one-sided so far, because it seems like Renekton is a lone wolf. He's the first one to fall on down. Nox coming in from a flank, looking to try and isolate these key members and make the fight a little bit easier for them to path around. Hexflash then, incredibly low, since I need to utilize my full combo before I do inevitably fall on down both Chirp as well as Stick skidding amongst the chaos. And then he just hits the flash and says there's no escaping Bomber. this. Yeah, and Nox can't get into these fights. He can't do damage. This is one of the main issues with Lilia. You're a low-range champion in bursting champs like Ash, like Leona, like Talia. It's so hard to get in without just taking your entire health bar the moment you come near these champions. That's so awkward. You're watching it again. You can see him hanging on the fringes, waiting to find the moment. But we're yet to see that moment where you go for the flash, you know, spin around and put the entire team to sleep. Yeah, and this is just Lilia without flash pretty much. Can't get near, we see Hexblast doing a really good job zoning Nox out consistently, like using cooldowns, using your body as a shield for the rest of your team. And based on the items and the gold that Ion has, once Nox is moving from the fight, I think they're missing a lot of their strength for me. It certainly seems to be that way, right? Obviously, Herb has been farming up an absolute storm, but not enough at this point in the game. You still do need like a, another 10 minutes or so to truly hit the heights of that of a fasting center. It's just a disjointed nature in which these fights are taking place in where they're doing such a good job, our Ion, in not allowing Fury to execute their game plan the way they really want to. Yeah, definitely. And it's so hard for, you know, Hooper to do the damage he needs to right now. He doesn't have, you know, a decent amount of stacks at this point in the game. He went for the defensive item instead of, like, the opportunity you usually see from the center at this point in the game. Probably behind the clock when it comes to items in general. So, you know, having a lot of their damage profile be so magic damage heavy, is, you know, just, it's biting them in the arse bits community because they don't have the AD threat from the top or the AD that they really need right now. Yeah, they certainly don't, and Maple going to be kicking himself over this one. He's not going to hold, uh, he's not going to burn the flash, rather. He's just going to simply cop that stun by Leona. He's going to be confused by the ability for the Zenith to follow him, even despite getting away. Out goes the Weaver's Wall, completely isolating this turret as a done deal. It will fall on down. Now becomes five turrets to two. And with Ion still having the Baron, they've made it a pretty successful one with the amount of gold they've been able to achieve with it. Surely they go towards the Dragon now and deny Fury of that Soul. Yeah, and this is the Cloud Soul. And Skimmy, I, I, I sent you a stat the other day, which actually caught me off guard. The Cloud Soul is the highest win rate soul by almost 6%. Yeah. You know, all the other souls are sitting on that like 87, 88% point. But, you know, Cloud Soul, 93, 94% win rate. And I was very curious about, you know, because when you look at these souls, you think that you're like, oh, I want the, the slow and the damage from Hextech. I just want the damage that comes out of uh, you know, the Infernal or like the utility from the other souls. But, you know, Cloud is a very underrated soul. Like, I think move speed is probably one of the better stats in League, and it's hard to quantify like how much gold uh, you would get from the Clouds or from the, all that move speed you get when you use your ult on some champs. It is monumental in like how it changes how they play the team fights. You know, like Cassidon can play very aggressive, you know, you can riff walk in and poke people out and use that move speed you get from the Klausel because it's a pretty low cooldown to like skirt around team fights and just change how your champ works. I'm sure it can feel a little bit jarring at times, almost a little bit like Remix where you're like, hang on a minute, this is how my champion usually plays and now I've got all this abundance of mobility and my champion just feels so much better without this now, I no longer want to play it, right? So I think it can be a little bit jarring in that regard, but as you say, I think movement speed is, is such an underrated stat in terms of uh, uh, just the ability to rotate faster, um, and it, I guess on the on the flip side, right? If you're not accounting for that, how many times have we seen people just go full world tour mode and from top to bot rushing all over the map? You don't know where to look because they're just constantly at like 500 ms. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely nice, especially when you know just move speed in general. Like a lot of the runes or items now in this uh, new season, new items, a lot of them give move speed. Like we see Warmogs paired with Swifties boots on a lot of supports. That's a lot of movement speed that you're getting from these items, and it's so nice to be able to move around the map faster. And this is why a lot of mid laners are getting caught off guard from these support rooms coming out, because we see the Swifties bought a lot of the time if you don't need the extra utility coming out of the defensive boots. I can't wait until like, what, season 20 or something crazy where Blizzard, uh, Blizzard, uh, <laughs> League of Legends or Riot <laughs> then go, you know what? How crazy would it be if we just said, you know, everyone likes to be mobile. Let's just give everybody like mounts. Let's just let everyone run around the map, just freely rotate. That's no longer a big concern of ours, right? I feel like it could certainly go that direction because the ability to be so quick has uh, definitely been a staple in many different comps. In goes Coley with the Insect. Isolates out the key target he's after. Nox goes golden, but his entire team is going grey around him. 
He will eventually fall on down, and the hunting pack of iron continues to march on forward. Findo runs to the hills and top lane. Maple, full HP, bear in mind, straight back into mid. And Dorimon, as a classic top laner, not interested. He's off split pushing. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully said, Skimmy. You know, he goes gold, but his entire team goes great. That's been the story of this game. Everyone's dying around Nox. He can't take over these fights by himself. He needs his team, but there's just no one there to really help him. And everyone's fallen so far behind. And I think that is thanks to Coley. Like, the performance he's having on this Lee Sin right now is one that a lot of teams need to start thinking about. I agree. No, he's certainly been a standout in this series alone. Both games have been really, really strong from him. And certainly is adding another layer of difficulty to how do you approach a team like Iron. Let's run it back on the replay once again, because it all just starts with a nice Ash Arrow. Yeah, we see the Ash Arrow not landing onto Nox, but it doesn't matter because Coley finds the Insect, finds that really easy kill onto him. He's only done his job. He's not even looking back at Nox. He's already onto Hooper, finds another member to take out the fight straight away. He's just having so much presence in these fights, and it's just really easy. He can either use his kick to disengage Nox from, you know, flashing in and flanking his team, or use it to throw him into his team and just blow the champ up. Yeah, for all the good work done in the early game by Fury, it's completely come unstuck, hasn't it? Now, 27 minutes in, 10k deficit. And very much the, the kill score is uh, leading its way towards a repeat of what we saw in game one and being very heavily favoured in Ion's regard. Out goes another Ashero. Oh, very close from finding themselves the Zenith Blade to follow things up for the true CC pairing. But the pressure doesn't uh, simmer down anytime soon and he's made to flash across the water safety. Yeah, the pressure has not simmered down this entire game. Excuse me. They're always on the front foot. We always see Ion throwing out these abilities off cooldown pretty much. I don't think I've seen the Ash ult off cooldown for a very long time, constantly throwing it out, trying to hit whatever member they can because they have so much follow-up for this uh, utility coming out of Ironside, but they are going for the aggression onto Doraemon. We'll try one more play. The 1v5 surrounded by Hannah Vagragas. Can we get the kill? He's limping away. The Dawning Shadows, the ones to take him in the end. That is a shutdown. The first kill of the game here for Hooper, which he has certainly been hunting for all day long. Styx continues to flash forward aggressively. Never seemingly in a position where he needs to use it to run away. He is a Front forward, W key only Ash type of player. And with six Void Grubs, you wouldn't put it past him to find a few more kills and then look for the end. On to Finder they go. He's tanking up the world, but there is another Ash shot right off corner into the perfect bot lane combo. CC'd for pretty much all year long. And Finder, the sole survivor, well, not anymore. Yeah, Coley goes for the Insect onto Chirp, but doesn't realize he's going to one-shot him anyway. So it doesn't even matter about, you know, finding that kick onto the to find the Syndra back into your team. And very, very nice team fight from the team. Dorimon's so tanky, he takes so long to kill, so the rest of the team rotates, cleans up that team fight pretty easily, and Ion are gonna take away the 2-0 this week. Perfect 2-0 for them, happy days. It confuses this narrative as to what are our strongest teams. The top three seems pretty much guaranteed at this point. And outside of that, it's still all up in the air. What is Sticks doing for this time? Ain't no way he's hitting the gritty on LCO. You know, as Ezreal would, he need the gritty on the LCO. Respect that we're seeing some camera movement. That's why I like to see Skimmy. I like to see some camera movement after game. So hopefully this one goes into the montage. <laughs> Very nice to see out of Ion. I think that this team, it's uh, it's good to see that, you know, one of our Dark Horse teams is having good performances like this. It really is. Uh, I just, I love the polarity shift, right? You go from Styx just having a great time into them just like, ah, oh, yeah, we just, it was another game of League of Legends, right? Such a difference between the two of them. In the end then, to close out day number one of our very first Super Week for the split, it's Iron that get the perfect 2-0. We'll jump to a quick break and we'll break it all down right after this.